And I was like, how to bring crap back to life, you mean? Yeah, I could do that. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Quite some time ago, somebody asked me how to show you guys how to reglaze a lot of stuff that you might be unhappy with on the first glaze. What you guys don't know is that I usually put all the stuff that I'm really unhappy with from my kiln loads and I put them on the left hand side of my table. And about four or five months later, when I have maybe half a kiln load of stuff, I'll usually reglaze my stuff and see what little tiny bit of magic I can squeeze out of there. And this is something that a lot of potters do. If something's completely jacked up, I'll leave it alone, but reglazing's especially for those things that have one tiny little discrepancy in them, and you really want to see if you can one-shot it one more time to get that little discrepancy out of there. But there's a couple things you have to know before you start glazing. Number one, stuff like this is no longer bisque. The pores are no longer as open and as accepting as liquid and glaze as they once were. That means that they're going to dry a lot, a lot slower. So I highly suggest when you glaze your stuff, you do it at the beginning of the day or you have a lot more time for a later time to load the kiln. Because even if I'm trying to fix these little tiny discrepancies right here, they still need a very long time to dry. Usually you would take something like this, glaze it or dip it, and the pores of the clay would accept it very, very generously. Because they're thirsty, they can open up, they're already opened, and they need a lot more substance in them. They have space to fill. But this stuff right here is already glazed. The pores are already filled in with metallic substances and other chemicals. So if you're glazing this stuff, you better have a couple hours to spend. You're not going to slap out some glaze and put it straight in the kiln. So today I'm going to show you guys how to reglaze a lot of your stuff. Not only that, I'm going to show you some little tips and tricks I've learned over time. Now what I have right here is a really good Shimpo brand banding wheel. It's extremely smooth, you can barely touch the side of it, and it spins, it even has little tiny lines in it for your measurements. But what a lot of people do is they go online and get like one of these crappy ones. And these things are awful. You're going to go on Amazon.com and you're going to try and buy you a cheap one and it's going to sound all kinds of... And these things are awful. I hate these. I bought one because I was weak and I didn't trust Shimpo. I'm sorry, Shimpo. I'll never leave you again. You actually don't need one of these, but it's highly suggested you have something that spins very, very smoothly. Because reglazing your stuff is actually going to be harder than glazing your stuff in the first place. The second thing you're going to need is a really good brush. Now, you can use any brush you want, but I prefer to use something like this and not re-dip my stuff, simply because the high majority of the time, I'm just fixing one spot. But if I get the color red and put it on this one spot and put it down, it's going to look extremely uneven. Really experienced potters are going to be able to tell that I re-glazed this if there's one single piece that's a different color than the rest of my stuff. And that's part of having the banding wheel. What I usually do is I get a glaze and I'll spread it among this entire line right here so it looks nice and even. The third thing you're going to need is some glaze. Now I'm using glaze that's store bought because I know this glaze is extremely stable. While some of my stuff, like my green over here, is usually really, really runny. So I'm trying to mix in a stable glaze with a runny glaze so that it might have some stability to it. But if I mixed in a runny glaze with another runny glaze, it would just end up extremely runny. Because keep in mind, you're going to be double firing something, and that double firing is just going to run even more so than the original glaze runs. Let's start off with these two green bowls right here. These two are going to be extremely easy to reglaze, and the only reason for that is because this one has a small discrepancy right there. There's a tiny, tiny little crawling space. This one right here has the same problem. This one just has crawling all over its backside, so these are going to be extremely easy to reglaze. But the key component here is knowing your glaze. This is my Soso Aribe, and it's like 56% nepheline cyanide or something like that, and that stuff is runny AF. So I'm going to grab myself a glaze that's much more stable than the one I have here and put it over it, and hopefully it'll stabilize out and make it not run even more when I double run it. Dip, dip, chocolate chip. After you're done glazing, the one thing that you're really going to notice is that this is going to dry extremely, extremely slow. The reason for that is that all the pores are already closed. This is no longer bisque. This is no longer at 0, 06, 0, 04, or 0, 05. This stuff is cone 6 now, and so it's going to be a lot more difficult for the pores of the clay to reabsorb glaze, and especially if you're putting glaze over already glazed stuff. So what I suggest you do is put it aside for a later time and let it dry extremely, extremely slowly, because this stuff is going to stay shiny and wet for a real long time. What I usually do is I'll glaze my stuff at the first part of the day and then wait till the end of the day to put it inside the kiln. Potter tip! If you have a little piece of kiln stilt or kiln furniture laying around, go ahead and set that bad boy down. 
very, 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 very gently pick up your bowl or whatever you're reglazing, ugh, kung fu fingers, and put it directly on top of that at the very middle. If you did not glaze the inside of this piece, you can leave it like that to dry and still make use of this. And if you're really, really good, you can actually move it wherever you want. Oh no! Without disturbing the piece. This one right here just has one tiny little spot wrong with it, but if I glaze this one little spot right here red, someone's gonna know that I reglazed the entire thing and it just looks massively unprofessional. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reglaze this entire top band, just like there's a bottom band here. I'm gonna make one full long stretch of it. Now we're gonna set this thing over here with its brother to dry off. Ah, Kung Fu fingers! And sooner or later it's gonna look like this. This isn't all the way dry, but this is getting pretty close. This has been sitting for maybe 30 minutes, and this right here is starting to dry just nicely. I just can't touch any of the wet spots right there like I'm doing right now. And when it starts to dry, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. But be careful, don't rub this or anything because this comes off really, really easily. So what you're gonna do now is you're just gonna leave this alone until it's completely, completely dry and load it into your cone and fire it one more time at whatever cone you originally fired the first glaze. Now this bowl here has a bunch of blotches on it, but this is my Randy's Red. It just didn't stick for some reason. And I think it's because it didn't get along with this new experimental clear I was messing with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more Randy's Red on top of it, but I'm not putting that clear that's way down here at the bottom of it. And seeing if it sticks one more time. I prefer to reglaze stuff like this because there's nothing wrong with the bottom of this at all. This actually looks quite organic and natural and normal and beautiful. My main problem is this space from the rim up. So all we really have to do is this right here, and then we can just take it off like this with no problems. Oh, careful, no touchy, no touchy. Now this right here is my favorite drinking cup. This is the one that I usually have with me in my studio, and it's because it's so tasty with these original kind of organic, natural kind of bumps and feels on it. But the inside of it has a bunch of holes, so I'm gonna reglaze the inside of this and see if I can do a good old rollout. The way you do a rollout is you firstly kind of water down your glaze, and just dump it right inside of whatever you want to glaze the inside of. And just pretend like this is a cement mixer. Just go ahead and roll it around like this. And get as close to the edge as you can without actually dumping it over. And as you go about this, go ahead and dump that bitch out. Sometimes I'll miss the rest of the inside and then I'll just give it a little rimmy rim. And there you go, you glaze the inside and the outside. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I've been drinking from this for like three months. The awesome thing about glazing the inside of stuff only is that you could just put it down and touch it all over and it'll naturally dry. And even when you put it inside the kiln, you don't have to worry about smudging any glaze off. What? What is this? Oh, it has crawling. No, no, we're not glazing you. You get out of here. Okay, so now that these are all pretty much dry, it's time to load the kiln. But you do gotta remember not to touch too many wet parts because some of them are still gonna be wet. And mind you, I started this video like three hours ago, so this is still taking a very long time to dry. So be very, very careful not to smudge anything or else you will have to reglaze them. There's two things that I want you to remember right now. Firstly, remember what some of the stuff looked like before we put it inwards. Because sometimes I double fire my Ron Rice High Gloss Black and it turns a little bit more metallic and it'll look a little bit different even if I don't put more glaze on it. So double firing is definitely a technique I'll talk about in a later video. And secondly, I ran this at cone 5 because I'm afraid at cone 6 it'll run a little bit more. So I'm just taking a little bit of an extra little precaution to run it at cone 5. So let's come back in the morning and see how it does. Tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and it has tripped offwards, so it looks like it's ready to be opened. Now, before we open this, there's two things I want you to remember about reglazing your work. Number one, there's a good chance that a lot of this stuff is not going to come out perfect. That means the glaze that I put over it isn't going to override the glaze that I already put on it. So, a lot of it's just going to look like a mixture of the two glazes. And the second thing I want you to remember is that you're over maturing your glaze. Something that goes to cone five has now gone to cone five or six two times now, which means that it's going to be over matured. So some of your reds are going to turn brown, some of your reds are going to turn green, and some of your blues are going to turn light blue. So just keep that in mind before we open this kiln.
Yup, look, and there's the ex-husband, flaccid as it'll ever be at Cone 5. Now this one here came out pretty good, it accepted the glaze just fine, I put a lot of firebrick right over this from Amico, and it seems to have changed the chemistry of the glaze and the color a tiny, tiny bit. You can kind of see how it's this little bit of reddish color here. The main thing I was trying to get rid of was this right here, and instead of this molding in with the rest of the color here, it just turned one color, so I coated the entire thing. This bowl is now good, it has no more crawling in it, and so it kind of worked. I can see a little discrepancy right there, but you know what, I think it's still a pretty beautiful bowl. Now these two right here were the bowls I was complaining about earlier. I was mostly trying to get the scrape marks on the bottom gone, and it looks like I've done that. It looks like everything blended in just fine. This is a really good lesson to learn because I've just put black on black, and that molded into the rest of the black. So if you're using a glaze that's already on the first glaze that you're trying to reglaze, it'll probably work a little better than sticking like green on red or red on blue or something to that extent. And you can see that there's no more lines with this bowl right here. It's all good in the middle, it's all good on the side. I can barely see where there was a discrepancy in the first place. This one turned out just fine. Glazing successful. And this one came out exactly the same. This one I glazed on the inside and on the outside again. And I just gotta sand off the bottom to make it a little more smooth and it'll come out just fine. But this one is also a massive victory for the reglaze test. This one is great. I love this a lot, everything came out fine, and the colors didn't change that much. Sometimes my black gets really metallic, and it didn't, so I'm really happy about that because I really enjoyed this pink and black color here. I don't want to talk about this one. This this one this one looks this one looks all I don't want to talk about this one. You guys remember this one here? This one I coated with that firebrick red again. And you can see clearly how it turned a little bit reddish green. It looks really, really nice actually. But it didn't really get rid of a lot of the crawling that was wrong with it in the first place, even though I stilted it. So this one is kind of a failure. It's a really nice color, but also there's glass like material over it, but it just doesn't look professional. It doesn't look nice. So I think this one we're gonna call a loss. And this is the kind of thing I'm really trying to warn you guys about, because if you reglaze something, the chances that it'll come out better the next time get less and less as you go on and as you keep trying. It's much better to just make something concentrate and really know your glazes in the first place. I'm actually really ashamed of this one. It, it turned out awful. I reglazed the whole thing. Nothing happened. None of the pores opened and accepted any glaze. But the one thing I do want you guys to note is that the Tenmoku gold on the inside completely changed, and it looks really good now. So this is what happens when I double fire my Tenmoku gold. You can see that goldish color on the outside, but I shouldn't have to do this each and every time. I should really just get to a higher maturity rate or a higher fire. But this is again what happens when I double fire my Tenmoku gold. It becomes this creamy kind of golden honey texture, and I really like it a lot. Sadly enough, this one's going to go in the garbage now. This one here is one of the yarn bowls that I reglazed, and I like it a lot. Nothing's really wrong with it. Um, the glazing worked, but I will say I remember why I didn't like this one in the first place, and it's because it has a giant Kool-Aid man scary nightmare face on it. So even though the glazing worked, I'm going to get rid of this, because it's the stuff of nightmares. Well thank you guys for joining me today in this video, I really hope that helps some of you guys reglaze your pottery and really understand what happens to your pottery when you're asking it to go through the same process a second time. If you want to see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below, my Facebook fan page and my Instagram. I hope you guys have a great day and good luck reglazing your artwork! Please, end my life. Please kill me.